All right, time for a DraftPhysics.com video presentation. Try to make this one of the short videos and try to make sense of a couple of different subjects at the same time. So it's going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, but the reasoning here is just so bizarre. So there is this classic experiment. You take a one mass object and you combine it. It's moving with 10V. You combine it with another one mass, it ends up being a two mass object and it'll be going half the velocity. Everybody agrees on that. But momentum says yes, all your force is still here. You didn't lose any force because frankly all of the energy, all of the force is still moving in exactly the same direction. No direction changes were applied. So all the force is still going in the same direction. Of course it's all still there. The kinetic energy theory says, no, you lost half of it. Half the energy is gone. So it doesn't matter whether it's a 10-ton train. doesn't matter whether it's a 5-ounce piece of paper or something. It, half the energy has to be lost by their theory. No matter how violent the crash is, it's always going to be half. Um, and again, this experiment's been done many, many times. Classic physics experiment, and frankly, almost, okay, 99% of the momentum is conservable. Of course, you could throw the one mass down with, you know, a tremendous velocity and smash the whole train track and, you know, and lose momentum. But frankly, if you do it in any kind of decent way, you conserve the momentum, and yet you lose 50% of the kinetic energy. Nonsense. So another experiment's been done by physicist Michael, is he had the same explosive, the same spring, compressed exactly the same amount, and uh, pushes objects away, and he gets these bizarre numbers where there's 400 ke in one experiment, or 200 in momentums, that somehow I get more and more momentum the heavier the object I put. So if I put a 3, 4, 5, 6, I can go to a 700 mass object or something, and I can end up with 1600 uh, as a momentum number, some so I can create almost anything. And the lighter I go, the less energy I get. So it's exactly the opposite of the gun and the bullet, uh, which is somewhere in here, <laughs> somewhere I drew a gun and a bullet. But anyway, uh, it's exactly the opposite, right? I mean, for the bullet to have 2,000 joules, it has to have a significant amount of momentum. And obviously with this system, the explosion could never create a bullet with 2,000 joules because it keeps losing more and more momentum the smaller the object I put in front. And obviously, I also could just mix these objects, and I could put a 10 here and a 1 here. And the argument would be that somehow the same explosion gave the same object way different amounts of momentum. Somehow it gave it uh, 10,000 here, and I mean uh, 1,000 here, or 1, or, you know, or 10, and it gave it 10,000 here, you know, just because I put it next to something bigger. So I put it next to a brick wall and explode it, Somehow, okay, I'm going to get not just twice as much momentum, hundreds of times more momentum. Um, and so this goal goes back to this stupid idea that somehow they've proven it takes 16 times the fuel to go four times the velocity. Uh, it's nonsense, never been proven, doesn't have anything to do with reality, and certainly doesn't have anything to do with Newton's third law in these experiments, in the sense that obviously the simple gun is a violation of Newton's third law. The gun leaves with two joules of energy, the bullet leaves with 2,000 joules of energy by their kinetic energy theory. By momentum theory, they have exactly the same energy. It's just 1,000 atoms over here moving one mile an hour versus uh, one atom moving 1,000 miles an hour. That's all it is. It's the same amount of energy, same amount of motion in the universe. So none of this makes any sense at all. And obviously this experiment is sort of right there in the middle of it saying, well, is that really, have you really proven this? That you can make more momentum by putting heavier things in front of an explosion? So if I want my explosion to be really powerful, it's not so much I have to compress the gas. I don't have to make a vessel. I just have to put heavy things in front of the explosion and somehow it will automatically make more momentum in the universe. It'll make more energy in the universe, more momentum. Now I say it's the same kinetic energy, so I shouldn't put, I should have put four here. They'll say it's the same kinetic energy in both these cases, but they're going to be very different momentums. So the key point is, is that it's 100 to 400 in momentum and the Ke is going to be the same number. So again, you're, you're declining in your Ke as you go heavier and you're increasing in your momentum as you go um, heavier.
and there's no evidence that's true. You can't change how much energy the explosion makes. It only makes a certain number of little bits of, of stuff moving a certain amount, and that's all there is, and nothing more. Anyway, so all of these subjects deserve detail, and I have detailed some of them. But I just thought it was appropriate to bring them up in one video and just point out that all this is based on the fact that they don't understand gravity and they think, and they don't understand weight. I mean, it could show the scale thing where you put one weight on a scale and if you put an identical weight on the same scale, you did three times, you created three times the energy. So when the scale goes from 100 pounds to 200 pounds, there's three times the more energy in that second piece you put on the scale. Even though you did exactly the same work, you created three times the energy. I mean, this is nonsense, okay? They have a lot to account for, and they're accounting for none of it.